<clears throat> this is what I do when you're not here. I guess we'll have to see who wins between Chun Li and Beat. Beat Hoven? Yeah, Beat Down Hoven. I'm doing another mini PC video and I'm not in the mood to do it, but this one's interesting. This is a Paladin mini PC. I don't even have my notes out, I just play in games there. This is the Peloton W04, and this features a core Ultra 155H, 16 cores, 22 threads. Six of those cores are the performance cores. You get six beefy cores. That's a good number of performance cores, and those are hyper-threaded, giving you 12 threads there. And then we have 10 of the efficiency cores, which are not hyper-threaded, 22 threads in total. I'm gonna go through the specs on this after we take a look at it. Behold its glory. Thanks to Who Keys for sponsoring this video. Now these are OEM Windows keys. That means that you do your own tech support. You're not gonna be relying on Microsoft and they're generally locked to the hardware. We got a coupon code, click on buy now. Put in coupon code TS25, hit apply, and that price comes down. Now when you compare that to the outrageous prices from Microsoft, you'd have to buy this many, many, many times to equal the price of one regular key from Microsoft. As of right now, this Windows 10 Pro key will unlock Windows 11. We also have Windows 10 Home. Windows 11, you can buy it directly. Windows 11 Home. And we have two flavors of Office. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here. Go to your user center. Click on My Purchase Orders. Just View, Keys, and Codes. And you can just copy and paste your key. Hit Start. Type Activate. Click on Activation Settings. Paste it in there. Click on Next. And you will be activated. So head on over to WhoKeys.com to get yourself an OEM Windows key at a price that makes sense. Now this case, this little case, I really, really like it for a few different reasons. Now we're not talking pure on aesthetics, even though I do kind of like the industrial style and all the different metal panels that you get on this. But I really like the ideas we're seeing here on the top because I'm tired of taking screws out of things to get access to the innards. It's just a magnetic top that just pops open. So I'll show you the inside in just a second. Keep on looking at the outside. So I'm just making you look at this for a little bit longer. Um, let's tell you what else comes in the box. So you got HDMI cable, you got your power cable. You also have a thermal pad and a heat sink for an extra M.2 that you can put under the hood. Now we'll crack it open and look under the hood. So it's magnetic. It just pops off. It's a pretty strong magnet. So anyway, now that we've got it open, you can see inside there, we've got 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, and that is a one terabyte M.2 NVMe um, SSD. Now you can see that this already has a heat spreader on top of that. And you know, underneath that, there's a thermal pad. It needs it because this M.2 is really fast. I'll show you the benchmarks in just a second. Let's keep going through uh, all of this. So we got a clear CMOS button. We got USB-C. We got a power button. We got our audio jack combo jack there for your headphone and microphone. So the USB 4 there, it also, it's 40 gigabits per second. It supports using a graphic stock if you want to hook up an external graphic stock uh, or video transfer, whatever like that. Um, and it can be used as a display port. So USB 4 is extremely versatile. So you'll be able to hook up three different monitors when you combine everything. Now on the front, those are USB 3.0. 3.2 Gen 2. Flipping it around to the back and look at that. I love seeing two RJ45 ports. These are 2.5 gigabit NICs. You get two of those. As far as other connectivity goes, you also have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. Also on the back, we have two USB 2.0, which I am completely fine with. I enjoy uh, USB 2.0 for my peripherals. Above and beyond that, we have DisplayPort 1.4 and HDMI 2.0. Both will do 4K 60 Hertz. So all in all, you can have three monitors uh, running with this. The dimensions are 128 by 128 by 52 millimeters, and it weighs 0.6 kilograms without any of the accessories hooked up. Comes with Windows 11 Pro. And Windows 11 Pro pre-installed. The TDP on this is 55 watts. All right, now I don't know what the price is on this right now. I, I'm not sure because it's it's not out yet. I'm making this a few days before it comes out. I know the Core Ultras are generally a little bit more expensive than the similarly, uh, I guess the similarly spec or the similar speeds when it comes to like the Ryzen parts. But this one, um, I think you'll see in the benchmarks, it's pretty fast. So I can't think of anything else. Let's go into the benchmarks. All right, I forgot and it's been 25 minutes, but this is Ada 64 and we are running the CPU at 100%. We had a little bit of throttling right there, 3%. It's not very loud, but we did have a tiny bit of throttling. And if you can see over here, I've got a couple different things going on. I've got just Ada monitoring things. Looks like we're getting in the upper 80s over there. And then here, the core temperatures. God, the CPU package is getting really hot. Yeah, the core, yeah, core max, yeah, this is, um, it's running a little warm for my taste. And I don't like the fact that we saw some throttling there. A little bit of overheating on this. So if you're going to be doing like rendering and everything, just keep that in mind. It has not crashed or anything. So 
not worried about that, but it's uh, running warmer than expected. All right, there we got core thermal throttling detected on both hardware info and A to 64. So I might have to go and try to figure out if there's some way to turn these fans up. Let's go ahead and test the, the sound. First off, this is just how loud it is while I'm just sitting right here at the desk. The room's not super quiet because there's a lot of stuff going on. All right, now I'm gonna put it about a foot away and just show you how loud the, the unit is compared to the room. It's barely more audible than anything else that's going on in the room. So it's really quiet. The fans have a constant sound and it's just kind of a, it's not really that bad. It's not very obnoxious. So I'm gonna say the fans are okay on this one, but the heat is maybe uh, not getting dissipated. All right, I'm running Cinebench right now and I just got hardware info. I left it open because I wanted to monitor what was going on and we're seeing much more reasonable temperatures. It keeps going like CPU package keeps saying 90 then 70 then 89, then 70. But yeah, the, the CPU temperatures look a lot more reasonable here. It says we're still getting some throttling here, but um, yeah, it's, it's working. It's actually working really well. So we'll see what the score is when we're finished. All right, and as expected, the single core performance on the Core Ultra 7 155H, really good. Score 1781 if you're playing along at home. Note that these down here, these are 11th gen. So, you know, like 12th, 13th, 14th gen stuff. And also the AMD stuff. Going to be a little bit higher than that, but it's not showing up here on the the scale. All right, so there's our scores, the multi-core score 15826 and the single core score 1781. I want to do a better test straight up head to head with an AMD Ryzen 9 8945HS. And you can see the single core actually favors the Intel Core Ultra, but the multi-core is really close. So these two processors are very similar in just raw computing power. Take a look at that. It's a little bit ahead. 15826 versus 15786 for the Ryzen 9 8945HS. Well, it looks like Intel can actually game. This is the highest score I've seen from an Intel. So this Core Ultra 7 155H doing a pretty good job. 73.1 FPS score of 3058 here in Valley. Again, let's go back and take a look at the 8945HS. It's only a couple FPS faster. So that, that feels a little interesting, I suppose. I'm not used to the, uh, I'm not used to the Intel's being almost as fast as the AMD's when it comes to, you know, gaming. Let's try a few more tests. All right, let's take a look at superposition. 51.95 minimum, 30.36 with an average of 38.86. You can see all the detailed information right there. Running this test on 1080p at medium. Now Geekpinch tests both the CPU and the GPU. We'll start with the CPU test. Single core score 2317, multi-core 13080. You can see all the tests. Pause it if you need to see any specific test for something that you're doing. And then let's look at the OpenCL score 35889. Scroll on down and I'll show you all those test results here. Okay, the hard drive in this, it just screams. This is ridiculous. Yes, this is what I wanna see. Um, even on the write speeds, those are very respectable write speeds, but look at that read speed. So if you're just accessing stuff, it's going to feel extremely snappy. Let's take a look at the IOPS as well. Yeah, this is easily the fastest I've seen, um, you know, just out of the box with any of these mini PCs. Now this came with a heat spreader because, you know, it's so fast. All right, let's look this up and just see what we get. I'm not sure. It usually tells me what it is. All right, the only information I'm getting here for the for the drive, uh, it's, it's running Fizen, of course, because pretty much everything is now. So I guess they're just using an in-house or, or an OEM, uh, you know, M.2 on the inside that's branded Peloton, but it's fast. It's also warm. So let's go ahead and do a test really quick. I'm going to run this test again, and we'll just see how warm it gets. So in doing my testing on the M.2, I noticed that in the first slot, after a few tests and after the computer had been, you know, running for a little bit of time, it started getting warmer than it did in the second slot. Now, how do I know that? Well, I started noticing that it was idling, you know, a few degrees warmer, six, seven degrees warmer than I had thought it was going to be idling. And I was like, what's up with that? So I ran another test and we got up near 80 degree mark, which is, it's in spec, but it's not the same as the first test I ran. So I was like, why is it warmer? on the second test. And I think that's because the CPU, these Intel Core Ultras, they generate a lot of heat. And right on the other side of the M.2 in the first slot, probably where the CPU core is, it's like right down there. So what I did was I took that out and moved it over to the second slot and noticed that it was several degrees cooler even when doing stress testing. Now I messaged them back and forth a few times and they said that they gave me one of the initial units and that they're making some adjustments to make sure that you know it stays cool in both slots. But if you get a unit and you feel like it's running a little bit warm in the first slot, it's so easy just to take the top off, take it out, move it to the second slot, put it back in there. 
it's going to run at the exact same speed because they're both PCI Express Gen 4. So you're going to get over 7,000 megabytes per second on the read in both of those slots, but it's going to run, you know, I was getting like seven to eight degrees uh, cooler in the second slot after it was on for a little bit of time. So yeah, those those CPU cores are probably just getting nice and, and warm, but that's just kind of what the Intel Core Ultra does. That's the nature of the beast here. If you want to put a second M.2 in here, um, it would be just fine, especially if you're getting an M.2 that's like under 5,000 megabytes per second or like a PCI Express Gen 3 by four, and you put that in there and it's running at a slower speed, like 3,400, 3,500 megabytes a second, which is still really snappy, but that's not going to generate as much heat. So that's how I would run this. And that's how I'm running mine. I popped it over into the second slot and it's running like it should, in my opinion. Just note that if you see any excess warmth in the first slot, put it over in the second slot and you're good to go. I like to run this on the high setting. And um, since we're using Intel, it's going to do the Intel XE Super Sampling 1.2, which is similar to DLSS or whatever. And then I'm gonna come down here and turn off motion blur because it's garbage. So we're running on high with no motion blur, then we'll do another one on medium and maybe low. Okay, almost over 30. I didn't expect this from an Intel, but you know what, let's go back and try it again on medium. So I'm gonna bump it up to medium, do the same thing, come down and just turn off motion blur, hit apply. And you can see the settings that we have here with medium, just turns down a few things. Cool, running this on medium. On medium, we are entering the lowest realms of playability because we didn't drop below 30 FPS. Now, this is a first-person game, but it's also an RPG, so we can argue about whether or not we need ridiculous FPS or not later. But you can almost play it on medium. All right, last, we're going to try low. And I want to note that this game does look pretty good on the low setting. And low already turns off motion blur. Starting up, I want you to look at this. This is running on low. So I'm gonna play this for just a little bit so you can see how good it looks on low because I think that, you know, there's a lot of games out there that when you turn them down to low, they just look kind of goofy or weird. But this game has art direction, it's got good lighting, uh, and it even has some, you know, effects and fog and everything, even on the low setting. So this is what you're gonna get on low. Now I'm noticing some pretty bad hitches here and there. There were definitely some hitches there that I didn't see before. 39.9 FPS. That's the best we can do on low. And you can see the minimum was 34.28. So playable, I probably wouldn't, but you know, totally playable. This is the biggest difference you're gonna see with the AMD and the Intel, is that despite the fact that their performance is very similar when it comes to like a lot of CPU stuff, when we actually get into gaming, this is just like the medium test. You can see we are pretty far ahead right there. All right, so we're playing Mario Kart right now and the game is absolutely locked at 60 FPS. And I'm playing this at the native resolution. So with a game like Mario Kart, you could probably get away with turning it up a little bit if you wanted to. But yeah, this is uh, running really, really well. Better than I've seen it run on any of the other Intel systems. So this Core, Core Ultra is certainly new. And, you know, normally we have a lot of stutter when we first start playing because the shaders have to warm up. There's barely been any stutter. So it's working really well. God, it's working really well. Of course you can't get too far ahead, can you? If you, you know, this game punishes you for being good. So yeah, anyway. Yeah, totally playable. This is um, Yuzu, by the way. So let's let Shader Cache build and then check again. All right, so even without building the Shader Cache, I'm noticing some hitching. So if I just move right here and there's no shaders building, but you can see there's a hitch or a stutter in there. I noticed that with uh, Cyberpunk as well, even though we were, you know, it said we were running at 41, there was, there was some weird hitches. So maybe we need some new drivers or something because this is a very new CPU. But right now, um, I'm going to say that this should play very well. Like, this is excellent performance. Running in the 40s, that's unbelievable, especially on docked mode. Again, we're running it at, like, our native resolution. I'm going to put it in handheld mode, and it feels really good other than that weird hitching that I'm getting. So as long as the drivers mature and they figure out the hitching, if you play this long enough to let the shaders build, that means play it 10, 15 minutes with the really annoying stuttering, and every time you're, you know, your game sees some like new effects that it's never seen before, it'll build the shaders, as you can see down here on the bottom right. Put my mouse on it right here, you see build shaders. I think that once those get built up, this will actually be okay, be very playable, which is very rare for a mini PC. Like this is some of the best performance I've seen in, in uh, Tears of the Kingdom. So yeah, maybe playable with the weird hitching, if that gets fixed in an upcoming Intel driver update, that'd be great. All right, so to sum it up, it's really fast. It gets hot. There's some weird hitching in some games, 
but overall it's extremely fast i don't know how much it's going to be so what i would do is i would compare this to like the ryzen 7940 hs um, and the ryzen 8940 5hs or whatever it is the ones i showed in the video earlier i would compare it to those when it comes to just you know pure performance those generally are a tiny bit faster when it comes to gaming but another use case for the core ultra uh, 7 155h is this you got 16 cores with 22 threads well in in proxmox if you're running if you want to run like a virtualization environment that's going to show up as 22 threads and as long as you're running like the latest version of proxmox with all the patches applied for you know these intel with the big cores and the little cores as long as you're running that you'll have 22 threads to allocate for lots and lots of virtual machines so that's a very good use case plus with the two 2.5 gigabit NICs. I think that's one of the best use cases. You'll be able to dedicate one of the NICs to something if you wanted to have like pure on hardware pass through, or you can just use like each of the different NICs um, and, and then, I don't know, run them, run them in virtual connections or whatever. You can do all of that. So there's a lot of uh, interesting use cases for this. It really needs, anything else you put in there is gonna need a heatsink. And I think a slightly bigger unit with a bigger fan maybe would have been uh, an okay way to go because this gets so hot that I, we saw throttling in two different tests. Saw it during Cinebench and saw it during the just the Puron 864 stress test. Now, when I was just playing some games and stuff, it didn't get that hot. So it all depends on what you're going to be doing. And it's not going to like, you know, if you're running Proxmox or whatever, it's generally not going to be running at 100% all the time. You can monitor your CPU. Mine hardly ever does because you know, one or two VMs will do some crazy stuff and then a couple other VMs will do some crazy stuff, but the whole thing's not gonna be running at 100% all the time because that's crazy. Yes, I would prefer it to be much cooler, but at the same time, it all depends on your use case. This may or may not be a big deal to you. Um, I think the bottom line for me will be, what are the prices on this compared to the prices on the Ryzen? So, I mean, just click on the links down below and you'll see if it's like twice the price of the Ryzen, then I've been nice for no reason because it's stupid. Don't get it if it's twice the price of a similarly spec Ryzen. You know, you do have a lot of threads, but I mean, the Ryzen's are all beefy cores, right? So I think that's really what it's going to come down to for me. And maybe in the description, I'll, or maybe or whatever, I'll, I'll put a little note saying like, all right, now, now that I see the prices, I've made a bit different of a judgment, but this is going to be up to you. So check those prices, see how it is. The last thing I want to say here, and I've been talking a lot about Intel, but I am really impressed with what Paladin's doing. I like their style. I like their design. I like their build quality. So I would like to see more stuff from them. So I have, I have no problem there. My problems are just with the, I mean, they could have made it a little bit better as far as the, the cooling goes, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that the Intel is, you know, it's a 55 watt part and is just running hot. It's fast, but it's hot. All right, let's see what's for sale over at epicpants.com, shall we? And this month, we have our 3360-based sensor, half price, these half price, and these half price. So we get you all taken care of right here. I love these things. They're for the, for the money, I mean. Sure, yeah, you spend 50 bucks, maybe you'll get something that has an internal gyroscope, but otherwise, I really like the way this one feels. And then this is water resistant. So head over to epicpants.com, half price on those, and I'll see you in the comments.